Yo, it's Tuna Selector here. And you're tuning into Do Over Don't Purple World Podcast. It's too late in here, yo. All purple. What's good, Do Over Don't Purple World, episode 86. Today we got a switch up of an episode and we got a virginity being taken because we got a fucking. Here I go, bro. Every time I break, I'm supposed to YouTube AI. I'm going to bleep this out and I'm going to remember to do it this time. YouTube AI. If you swear in the first 10 minutes, they automatically show your videos to less people. So I screwed that up. Not even 10 okay. seconds in the episode. Um, Algorithm. <laughs> we got a DJ virginity being taken today because we haven't had a DJ on the podcast yet. And shout out to Bryce, Bryce Rands, because Spend he, like. <laughs> he hit me up, bro. And he told me, he's like, this dude is funny as shit. He's good peoples. I know you ain't have a DJ on, so he put me on. But today we got Twin the Selector. I'm here. Mr. UK Viral Man. <laughs> Thank you, Purple World, for having me. Bro. I love podcasting. That's my, my that's my groove. I was going to say something, but you can't say it. <laughs> nah, bro. I'll just we bleep gotta it. wait. <laughs> if it's anything wreck, I'll bleep it out. Don't bro, even worry. I hate bro, I hate limited. Podcasting's it. my shit. I love <laughs> doing this thing. And thank for ha- thanks for having me. Um, this is just, I love it here. This is a nice studio, nice setup, so we're going to have some fun today. Bro, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, and appreciate Bryce for putting me on. Shout out you. Shout out you if you're watching this. He'll probably watch it. (laughs) Appreciate it. Anybody that's watching this, I don't like giving the breakdowns myself because I like being able to clip it up where somebody's saying it first person. Mm -hmm. So a little rundown just of who you are as a person, what you do within the scene. All right, so my name is Twin The Selector. I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I DJ all over, not just Massachusetts, but you could say – United States and internationally. Um, I DJ for Millie's, a uh, major artist. And um, I just love DJing. Like, I love it to the point that if I'm not doing nothing, I get depressed. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how much I love it. I just love DJing. I love having fun. Love cracking jokes. I love being out. You know what I mean? Not out, out. You ain't going to see me in the club or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But I love being out. And just enjoying myself and having fun and making sure everyone around me is enjoying themselves. That's what I do. How, what I do. How'd you get into DJing in the first place? So, DJing, um, I wanted to be a DJ from a kid. Um, my uncle was a DJ. And um, this was before, like, laptops and all that. We had um, mixers and they had to, like, amp up the speakers and big speakers. Like, the speakers ain't what we see now, these little <laughs> compact loudspeakers. In um, turntables, so I always wanted to be a DJ, and um, I made it happen as I got older, um, when the prices started to make sense. <laughs> as the equipment ain't cheap, I still use turntables um, yeah. in the crib, not outside, because they're too heavy. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and the pay's not right to be bringing out turntables, so, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I still use turntables. I still do it the old school way, down to the new school way, and um, I just love it, like, I go out, I feel like another thing, I go out and I feel like I actually don't have fun. Like, at times I wasn't having fun because the vibe's not right. Like, people ain't playing for the party, they're playing for themselves. You got to play for the party and give them that vibe. But You know what it is, people will learn, you know, every day. But that's what made me love DJing. Shout out to my uncle, Quality Over Quantity, Apes. He got me into this, Sticks. Sticks showed me the ropes, Viper, and then I just turned up. You know what I mean, just love it. It's fun. How old were you when you got into everything? Into DJing? Yeah. Um, professional. So I was doing it, like I was playing around in high school, low key. I was playing around with virtual DJ. Everyone was using that shit, like on the on the little laptop with the uh, little thing. <laughs> they bump it up. Yeah, yo. Um, maybe text slowly and be like, "Could you have them turn it down a little bit?" I can hear it. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They might no. hear it all here. No, I, I put the little fucking, what's it called? Oh, no, nah, so you good, you good, shit. you know how to do it, yeah. you good. No, nah, just to be safe, because it'd be distracting sometimes. Yeah, nah, I, I can hear myself. Sometimes, too, The bass is popping, that's yeah, how I like it. Bro. But um, <laughs> I'll say around, because I'd say I'm six and a half, seven years in professionally. So I'll say I started going crazy around 21, 22. Um, my first gig was at um, Brighton City Music Hall. Um, I used to practice in the crib all day, and then... I did a gig with um, AS8, Ab Soren, Fresh from DE, and um, Raekwon of the Wu-Tang Clan. Damn. So it was a packed show, and I was nervous as hell. I, I mean, like, bro, I was scared. I was thinking, 
yo, do I switch a song? Do I switch a song? And I'll switch a song, and it'll come out good. And then I'm like, oh, so I'm doing good. But I had the crate song. I had my everything lined up. I'll just be practicing in the crib. But then out of nowhere, basically, I'm leaving. I remember I was leaving. I was leaving that day. I left the um, the venue, and someone stopped me like, yo, you did wonderful, bro. And I'm like, oh, shoot. So people actually like me. So I just kept rolling with it. Like, that was it. Damn. So your first gig, you DJed Raekwon. Raekwon. So we opened for Raekwon. It was uh, Absorn, Fresh from DE. They, they needed a DJ for their set. But then the show didn't have a DJ for the beginning. Like, they're playing off uh, off of um, the house. So I'm like, I asked the dude, I can spin some tracks? Yeah, go ahead. Man, should have never did that. I had the illest crate. Um, I actually still have that crate on my old laptop, so I need to move it over to the new one. I'll be fucking around. I got three laptops. <laughs> now I'm starting from one to three. And um, I need to move it over because that was a legendary crate. I was playing things you wouldn't even think of, like Onyx. for like, And this crowd was like 35 and up, bro. This wasn't no... It's, it's Raekwon. It wasn't yeah. no young young kids. You know what I'm saying? So it was really turnt. Like, they was going up in there. I'm like, wow. Every song hit, too. And I was nervous. I mean, like, I'm standing there like, switch. Press the button. You can see it in me. You know what I mean? And then gone. After that, gone. They did two shows. So we did that. Then I got a call. I went to the club that night. It was someone's birthday, so I just popped out the club. They called me in the club, like, yo, we got to go to Maine next day. They want us back again. And then I actually got to meet Raekwon. That's crazy. And he was, I, I still have the video, but I didn't really show him. I was nervous if he recorded people. But he's talking about my waves at the time. I had way more waves than this. He said, yo, I see you on your waves. I'm like, yeah, you know, I got lazy with the waves. So fuck that. <laughs> I mean, wow. but that was, that's my, my intro to DJ. That must like my be first crazy gig. for you. Yo, that shit was but that crazy. early on, yo. But after that, it feels like it felt like every gig stayed on that level. Like I never did a house party. Um, I'll do private events and like baby showers and stuff, which is fun. I still do that to this day because that's where the money's at. But um, I wouldn't like besides shows for Mills and those. Those are the money's at the clubs get limited out here. It's not too much space, and there's not too much to do unless you're not from here. So people get the special price, the grand, da da da. da. But besides that, it was, that was just it. I was like, I never did a house party or um, something out the ordinary that couldn't push my career forward. And I don't know why. It's not like I pick and choose. It's just I got I got put in this this element. I feel like people just put me here, and I, I still feel over here. It is what it is. Damn, bro. Damn. So did the stage fright die pretty early? Oh, hell yeah. Stage fright died. Yeah, you hear me now? We good? Yeah. Yeah, so stage fright died early. Like, I can go in front of a crowd now, and no, I don't get nervous at all, no matter who's there. I just start playing and playing, but I've I done did over a 1,000 gigs probably in my God, life now. Damn. Like, over the years, like, I mean, like, I've done a lot of gigs, bro. Like. <laughs> a thousand. You wouldn't even think of, like, God, no. Bro. If I say 1,000, it might be along five, at least over five. I like, believe bro, a thousand. A lot of gigs. That's like, crazy. I bro. popped out to a lot of events over the last six to seven years. I'm like six and a half, seven years in. Um, Before that, I was just going out. But I've done a lot from private to, like, I'm working on my press kit again, and it's hard to update it because I'm DJing in the VFW and then I'm DJing at the Apollo Theater. Then I'm DJing back at a Boys and Girls Club or Icon Nightclub, a venue, regular nightclub in Boston, which those are called premier clubs. Maybe, like, those are their premier clubs. Then I'm at the O2 in London. And then, like I said, it's like it's hard to yeah. keep track. So now I'm focusing on catching content. And when I catch this content, I can go and post it and make funny voiceovers and Remember where I was at, cause sometimes it's like, oh shoot, I'll hear something be like, oh I did DJ there, I'm like, oh, all right, uh, DJ world man. <laughs> uh, I want to get more into like your DJ evolution after, but talking about the content, 
You would do like a bunch of just funny ass videos looking through your Instagram. Like when Bryce sent me like one, I think he sent me like two videos. He sent me the London clip. He sent me something else, and then I was just looking through and I was just laughing at mad shit. I was like, what the "Yo, fuck? the London clip is hilarious, man." Because <laughs> how that happened, how that went viral was so crazy. Because it was, I remember doing it. I remember eating a chip and doing that, and it was just my natural reaction. It wasn't like. It wasn't like they wasn't even paying attention to me. Like they was talking, <laughs> him and E S Dada. Dada was talking, Dada Dale Shaw, Dada. They was talking. And I'm over here really liking this chip. Like London got some good chips. My mom's from over there, so she always brought I know how they taste. But this one tastes like a barbecue Cheeto. So I'm like, yo, this is mad good. But I didn't want to disturb what they was talking about. So I remember we was on t- we might have been in Arizona. No, 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 no. Where was we? This is, yeah, we were in Arizona. We was on tour with Dave East. And my man called me, ASB, his podcast over in London. He called me, and he called me first about a porn star that we was talking about on the podcast follows me. I didn't know that, so you know what I did? <laughs> Followed her right back. <laughs> so after that, basically, he hits me up like two days later, like, yo, you know you're going viral over here? And then I started getting tagged on this post on Instagram. And I look, I'm like, oh, this dude got a lot of, they had like 5,000 likes at the moment, right? But then I learned how to look up views. Man, I didn't even know I can get that big on eating chips, man. How many views it get? On, on, it had to have 5.5 on Instagram and 10 million. So it had 5.5 million on Instagram, 10 million on TikTok. Shh. Yo, I actually just checked my YouTube on my way here. I posted a clip on my YouTube, and it got 7.7 li- um, views, and someone commented three days ago. I didn't even know they still commenting because the last comment was nine months ago. Yeah. And they was like, oh, this is the best advertisement for the chip brand. But it wasn't f- an advertisement for them. Yeah. I tried to holler at them, but they're like, whatever. That would have that been good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they understood what – but that just like that was natural. That wasn't uh, that wasn't their advertisement, but yeah. they won off that. Yeah, that. And then I had to create a TikTok. I didn't have TikTok. I didn't even want to go on TikTok. I heard it was like OD addicting, oh, yeah. but it's not really addicting to me. I go on there and post weird stuff. Like I posted some funny meme, some Dominican meme yesterday. <laughs> Fifty cents it was hilarious, but um, I go on there and post it and try to sign off because the only thing you could do on there, the best thing I think that's for is if you look up something. You might find a restaurant or something, but it's addicting to certain people who are consumers. So people yeah. are like, yeah, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I want to buy cologne. I want to buy this. For me, man, I just couldn't believe. I actually, people were tagging me on the TikTok. Someone I know from England hit me up from IG and said, this is you. It's viral on TikTok. That's what made me create the TikTok. Wow. And that, that was it. That's crazy. So that that's a wild story because it wasn't even first. It wasn't even about the chip. I don't even think, homie, when he called me the first time. Uh, shout out ASB, going up over there with that podcast too. He had he had some special guests on there after he came here. He had Davies. Damn. Um, and this dude had Blueface with him. Like he's he's doing his thing over there, over there, overseas yeah. and shit. So it was weird because. He, the, the initial call he called me about was, yo, you remember that old porn star? And I didn't I didn't know her uh, What's her name? Sky something. She followed me. I'm like, maybe it was like, you know, people be doing, like, you know, celebrities might be in your views and, like, they do their yeah. little spam and page or whatever. It's like spam. She actually followed me. So I'm like, you know that what? I'm doing them follow back. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I did. And then that's it. And he called me two days later, like, yo, you know, you're viral. He said um, he also gets stopped in the club over there. Like, so he's in the club. People are like, oh, that's you from the chip video. I'm like, yo, man, I wish that could happen over here. But what's it's not a brand over here. So that ain't happening. I would have did some walkthroughs off that. I would be like, yeah, three bands, I'm coming. Let me DJ too. <laughs> I would have had it lit. But I'm going to go back to England and uh, get back London, actually. Not even London. Exactly London. Get back on that too because – that that was viral. I ain't, I ain't expect that. That wasn't even planned, bro. <laughs> it was just my natural reaction. The chips were good. You get did, what I'm saying? Did you get mad fans from that? Yeah. Actually, oh, I that, and I posted another video of a cop. This was just some random video. 
Um, this one went real viral. Uh, I was having a hot streak. Um, this one was the cop falling off a slide behind the um the hospital over here. You took the video? No, nah, I didn't take the video. I just posted it before <laughs> everyone got to it because I seen it on Twitter. I'm like, oh, this is funny. Let me post it right away. <laughs> Yo, my Instagram did at least. I could pull that up. Let me see, man. I could pull that up, man. Bro. I'll show you the the. I can't believe the numbers. I'm like, God damn. Bro's a DJ blowing up off posting memes. Off posting memes and funny <laughs> stuff. That's all it is. You um, know, well, it, I, I feel like when I go online, oh, it did 10.5 on that one. Shh. Um, when I go online, I feel like you should have fun. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think Instagram's for the, for the flex show. Like, some people think it is. Some people go on there and flex their money. You know what I mean, right. put money to the air. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't got no calls. You know what I mean? Like yeah, hard. weird design. Like people do some crazy shit on there. I, don't, I like to show people who I really am. Like I DJ, and I'm. I like to have fun. Like I like to crack jokes. Like literally, send me funny memes. If you have my IG, send me something funny. You're gonna get a response. You know what I'm saying? Like I respond to everyone. I follow everyone back. I, like that's how it goes. You know what I mean, just genuine. It's good to be a genuine person. What got you posting all of this shit in the first place? Were you always just posting shit like this from the jump? Yeah, when I before I started DJing, I'll be honest with you, I only had like twelve hundred followers, yeah. and it was already booming. At the Instagram was better then, yeah. actually, because you could post at two a.m. still come up with people would see it. Yeah, yeah people would uh, see it, not see it three days later. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Instagram come out with this algorithm thing. But when I first started, I had 1,200 followers. Now I'm at 7,500, and I'm almost there at 10. Yeah. I can't monetize till 10, they say, but I'll be there. You know what I mean? I'm not worried about it. Um, I got vlogs dropping. I got beats. I'm starting to make mixes coming. Um, a bunch of stuff. I And people see me in weird places like the Gilly Fest. Um, one time he was on. The first video I ever was in that went viral was Millie's and Gilly. Um, we went to uh, to their podcast studio, and um, they, he did a freestyle. Which song was it? Why did I not see that shit yet? I got a, which song was that? Yo, we was in Philly having a blast this day. This day was one of my best days with the gang, yo. Like, this day was crazy. We uh, What was he doing? Oh, we had a, we was on the Conway tour. So, we was on tour with Conway. We did Baltimore, and then we did Philly. And we stopped Philly. We hanging with Garcy. Shout out Garcy and Dream Chasers. Um, we go to Gilly's thing. Gilly, he's actually as funny as he is online. Like he's, I was gonna ask you, what is that dude like shit. in fucking person, bro? Because he's like, yo, he's one of those. You could tell that from online that he's how he is. Yo, but he's, he's how he is, bro. That dude Good literally dude. seems like a cartoon character in real life, bro. This <laughs> motherfucker had me dying because we was just comparing. Um, one time, I know some people might not find this funny, but whatever. We was comparing our methadone mile to theirs. <laughs> and theirs is way crazier. They're in uh, Kingsington, Philadelphia. It's like crazy. If you ever go online and look this up, some zombie land shit. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, it ain't nothing like ours. And then he's bent over, paused like this, being funny for like 20 minutes. He, he wouldn't even move for 20 minutes. Like, yo, Gilly, yo, all right, we get it, we get it. <laughs> so he did a little video. And um, I remember... He shot the video. I didn't know the video was going up right away, right? So by the time I get in the car, we're about to go get some cheese steaks. Homie's taking us to get some cheesecake. Then we're going to eat the, um, we're going to hit the hookah lounge, the lit hookah lounge. The hookah lounge was lit that night. Yo, bro, this is one of my best nights in Philly, bro. And um, I remember that 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 day, um, by the time we get to downtown Philadelphia, everyone tagging my phone, calling me, yo, yo, yo. And then I go and look. We did what two million on that? That's the first God, video, damn, and I didn't even expect that. That was that's not even fully me. That was just in the background. I'm like, oh shoot, I had two million on this. So I learned a lot from bro, just hanging with Millie's, and you know what I'm saying. Bro teaches a lot. Um, you gotta be if you really want to be serious, you gotta be into it. Like for example, you, we just met today, but your podcast, you've been doing this for three years consistently. If you're not consistent. You ain't gonna blow, man. Like, it don't matter if the first episode had ten subscribers and the next one had a thousand. You know what I mean? Like, you just gotta keep going. 
You got it. Like, that's what I learned. So I try to keep up with funny content, not even just funny content that people get to know what I do besides DJing. Like the other day I posted me eating cereal in the morning put my camera. I didn't put the I milk saw in. I that one, I think. I should have put the milk in and ate it, but. I think man, I saw that. What's shit, those videos bro. called when people are eating um, food and. I don't even know. Um, a mukbang. <laughs> mukbang. Yeah, I could have did that. I should start doing that because people wanted to see me put the milk in, in the Yo, thing. Like, if I got the milk, right. sir. <laughs> you opened up a side conversation and my bad to interrupt, bro. Yeah. But why the fuck these motherfuckers on Instagram like seeing food so much? Because I was talking to people, bro. Tell me why I'll go post some music shit. Might get like a couple hundred views. Yep. And I only got on my personal Instagram. I got probably like 1,200 followers. Mm-hmm. Or no, I got like 15, 1,600 or some shit. Bro, I'll go post some music shit. Might get a couple hundred. I'm posting pictures of some regular ass fucking Food. burger, burger or yep. making fun of some shit. That should be getting like eight, nine hundred views. Nine hundred views and everyone asks, where you get this from? Bro. Like, bro, it's McDonald's. She got like 40 <laughs> likes. I'm like, yo, what the fuck y'all motherfuckers want to see? Food? You know what I noticed on TikTok too and Instagram too? What? When they make their reels, it's always burn a boy on a 2000, vi- um, 2000 hot beat. And someone makes a reel with their food or pouring drinks at a restaurant. Yo. Like, just go look at a restaurant's food and you know how they like try to advertise? Yeah. You're going to see... They'll have mad likes, mad comments, but it's always Burn a Boy song, Last Last or something on, a, peep that on a Mace beat or something that was bro. hot, a Dipset beat in, in the 2000s. It's like, why is it always shit, that? Bro. Like, why Burn a Boy? Only Burn a Boy. <laughs> like, it, 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 they don't take Wizkid. It's like, uh uh, Last Last. And then next thing you know, it'll be Dipset. Dun, 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 dun. Like, yo, what? Like, confusing. But that's true. I, all right, so before I was de- like serious on DJing, I would always post me eating. But then yeah. I got an eating disorder. Damn. I have an eating disorder. I can't eat in front of people no more. They Damn. take me and say I'm an American boy eating chips and say I got high <laughs> blood pressure and get 10 million views. I can't eat in front of people no more. <laughs> like, I want to drink this drink in front of me, but... You ain't going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yo, I'm telling you, bro. Yo, I'm telling you, bro. I, if this you go on my page, this ain't sarcasm. Nah, I'm telling you the truth, yeah. bro. In my page, if you go up the front on the top, it says twin. I have more pictures of food than DJing up there, and bro. those were getting wild views. Like people hit you up, where you got this? And I'll bro. gatekeep too. I ain't telling you where. The I'm motherfuckers at. be like, bro. <laughs> everybody be sliding up on them shit. Yeah, bro. sliding everybody up, want to hit you up. Yo, where you at? Where you at? Where's, where's the food? And I'm like, yo, I'm not doing none of that. Like, I'm not telling you my spots. You can't know my spots, bro. You can't know my spots, man. Yo, you ever tried Canes? Mm Mm-hmm. Bro, I started a huge-ass debate. I'm curious about your opinion. I don't know if you saw my story. I tried that shit for the first time a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I don't know, because everyone was telling me, all my L.A. people were telling me it's because I was at the Massachusetts one. The one on Commonwealth? Nah, I was in fucking, like, Haverhill or some shit, because I do delivery work, so I was up north. And I stopped, and I think it was Haverhill that they got it at. Yo, that shit Or no, it's Methuen 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 Yo That shit was ass I posted that video Bro, I got It was on Halloween too Funny mm-hmm. enough I got like 60, 70 messages Dead ass if I split them in half Half the people being like This shit is ass Half the people just arguing About how it's the best chicken in the world Um What's your opinion? I had it recently Not even less than a month ago Um That shit was ass Okay um, I was on Commonwealth. It could be because on that on that end they're rushing. It's a college campus. It was kind of the last hour. They only have four things on the menu too. Yeah. It's not like they have like a bass of menu. Right? Nah, it's that's like, why I was like, what's the hype about? Like, yeah, it was literally shit. four things you could choose from. The I bread, I'll say the bread. The is bread's fine. the bread's high. The bread's fine. I'll say the bread. Was the bread's high. It's high. I remember it was. Sorry, excuse me. You think got me burnt. <laughs> so, I, ginger, yeah. so I like I like the burnt. Um. It was chicken tenders. That was there a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. There's they a, got sandwich. a sandwich. They got a sandwich. I saw. I can't recall. I got the tenders though. And there was nuggets, right? I think they got nuggets. And or then, no, no. I don't even think they got nuggets. There was only four things you could choose no, from on the menu. It. it was like mashed potato and coleslaw. Yeah, that and there's like, like four other things. things. It was like chicken tenders, a sandwich. It was only four things. I I'm only like, saw those two for chicken. Yeah, Unless I'm tripping It might be two other things I remember yeah. it was four things And then there's fries And 
but it was only a four thing menu. So they're really making a lot of money, but I don't think they're putting out the quality. Yeah, the well, sauce. What do you think about the sauce? Nah, it wasn't good. I was gonna say that shit's overrated. Yeah. Everyone's like the sauce, bro. Chick Fil A like, is way better than that, yeah, and Chick Fil A is in a rush too. Chick Fil A, but fire, though. they have the best customer they make service. That shit. Yo, I was gonna say Chick Fil A, bro. <laughs> them shits be packed out the ass. Yo, the, the the but it goes fast though. But it's still good. Yeah, it's still like, good. Think about it. You, you probably. What's good, y'all? Thank y'all for tuning in to Purple World. Just a reminder, we got a fresh studio over here. If you guys want to book a studio session, our rates start at $50 an hour with an engineer, $25 an hour with no engineer. Rates do vary depending on which engineer you choose. You can book a session by heading over to the Book Now button in our Instagram bio and book through Square. You can shoot us a DM to figure out what time slot you want as well as which engineer you want to work with. As a test to see who our loyal viewers are and see who's really rocking with us, if you made it through this whole ad, you could head over to our square website and you could put code pod 10 and that's going to give you 10 percent off your session one time use though you are not able to use that again so use it back to the episode also don't forget to subscribe however if you got chick-fil-a 10 times there's possibly one time that it was bad yeah all those only times. one time if even probably if even and it's so fast they can, and they're not rude yeah. like they, they people up to nice mcdonald's man. oh and all these other spots like and people look like they don't want to be at work, which <laughs> yeah. I get it. Like the Chick Fil A motherfuckers be jumping. They be up, gas so. to be there. Like they getting yeah, tipped. Yeah. Like they getting the top dollar. They don't work Sundays. Like, Bro. yo. But if you ask, they're probably open on Sunday. That's how good the customer service is. Like yeah. that's just how I crazy. Don't know. It is. What the fuck? They'll probably Bro. get you a burger on a Sunday. I'm telling you. They man. gotta hypnotize them motherfuckers or some shit, bro. Because they all I never met a mad Chick Fil A worker. I mean, me never. Me never. never I never bro. did. Nope. Nope, and they be happy as hell. It's mad weird because uh, they have the little booth, so they'll be on the tablet. Yeah, bro. And they then, be out in the pouring ass rain. You see them when they wear the little fucking yeah. box shits, they yo. Don't, they them. don't give a fuck. They're yeah. like, yo. They, so Chick-fil-A got it, but I would never. I don't like um, Canes. Like, yeah, and it could bro. be my lo the location I was at. It was after a show. I went to uh, a show near the at the Paradise. So next, next door is Canes, and it was closing, but it was just... The skin was ripping off the yeah, meat. Bro, it was ass. Yeah, yeah it's all. Shit. It was all. It is like flavorless. the chicken. Yeah, flavor. Yeah, yeah, there's no seasoning. Nah, like no seasoning. Oh, yeah. you could get better chicken from fucking Domino's, which I hate to say. Yeah. I hate Domino's chicken, but literally, I don't even like, really eat Domino's. Yo, I'll be yeah. honest, with you, I cut fast food out. I'm still big, but I cut it out. Bro, I did that shit recently yeah. too, except tonight because there's nothing else. Open. Yeah, I'm sometimes you have a cheat night, but yo, I'm, I can't even recall last time I ate. It had to be like two months since I ate McDonald's. I live near Burger King and I just drive right by it. Bro. Um, Did you eat that shit at all after your spree? And then you're like, yo, this shit. Like, you just feel like that. Yeah, happened. you feel like ass, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's what happens when I eat um those weird, like, fast food places. Like, I feel like, like, all right, one time, I remember I was I had a DJ, a private event. And um, it was, I think it was like a baby shower or something. But I ate uh, some Wendy's on the way. And I get there and I'm on the phone and I'm like, yo, I just feel tired. Like I'm like drenching out, like, damn, like, what's wrong with me? And um I feel like it was the food, like that wasn't good energy food. But my only problem is I didn't want to go to this event hungry because no offense to people. I'm just saying you don't really eat everyone's food at a private room. You know how people's food are if you like eat. I mean, I just tell them every time someone gets me food, I just tell them, give me everything. I choose what I eat. You know what I mean? Uh, it be good use most of the time. So I'm not saying anyone's food is bad. But you just never know. Yeah. You want to be prepared because food is energy. If you're but, hungry all night, that shit. I yeah, imagine. you may not do good. You're going to be worried about your tummy. So that, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, you're right. Whoever said it was not good is true. If you like it, <laughs> Uh, I don't know where you be eating at. It's like, oh, there's a spot like that in LA. I don't like. Um, first of all, I hate going to LA. But um, really? yeah, I hate going to LA. I've, I've grown, bro. I probably I used to go to LA like three, four times a year. I hate. That I haven't shit. been there in two years because LA's like, the, the worst people. place. I liked it more before I was in the music industry. Oh, once I got in the music industry, I was like, yeah, this place is kind of. Yeah. I had a conversation about because uh, I DJed many places multiple times, right? Um. I feel like all my worst sets. Uh, one time, this is a crazy story. One time, yeah, I have a tell-all book with this. Yeah. But one time, we this is we was on tour, and um, man, we was at uh, this nice venue. It's not the last time. What they had to be like three times ago. This actually it happened to me twice. 
um, my laptop cut out in the middle of the set Damn. due to the equipment. But the equipment, the mixer set up, some stupid big Pioneer 4 channel one, the Nexus, uh, stupid mix, the stupid one, 4 channel mixer. But when you, you hook it up, if the technician don't know what he's doing, he's supposed to link the CDJs to the other one. Man, Millie's comes out. It goes, ooh, and a Chappuccino. And all you hear my laptop go, ah. I'm like, oh. Oh, uh, yo, he's looking at me crazy. He never yells at me, so I seen him get mad at other people, but I'm like, yo, it was working during sound check. Yeah. So I had to go aux, we finished the set. And I remember we was driving. This is the funniest thing he's driving to our next uh he's in the sprinter to our next uh destination. And he's getting comments about the set. And someone's like, if you don't get the audio right, dude, I came to see Millie. He got good fans. His fans, yeah. I love the fans. I love them. Like, they're the best fans. Like, if you, like you, you know the rapper currency, like, people yeah, have a yeah, cult yeah. of fans. Millie's has a good cult of fans, yeah. man. They're good people. Like, these people are good. They'll come give you food. They'll give you clothes. They'll give you a place to stay. I bro, swear to God. Got, bro, he got clothes on the way from me right now. Yeah, bro, I'm telling you, like, they all have clothes ready for you. They'll know your name. Like, they're good people. Like, uh, shout out to all the fans in the Sped Life, the Sped Life team. The, this is a this is a family right here, I'm telling you. And um, basically, this happened again. I was on tour with another artist. It's like a Benny the Butcher tour, too. And it cut out on me again. Damn, man. And I'm like, yo, what's up with L.A.? And then you go there. It's just not my vibe. But in and out is nasty. You don't like it? Nasty. Yo, I, I might have went to the wrong location. Bro. I like um I Yo. like I like Jack in the Box. Pause. I swear Jack in the Box is fine. Pause, but fine. it's good. It's good. Bro, the weird thing about in and out, dog, and I say this to everyone, and everyone I know that's gone out to LA multiple times, they say the same shit. I swear they put crack or some shit in there. It, yo, not for me Yo What happened with me mm-hmm. I didn't like it The first time I tried it And then I was like I was there for probably like Seven, ten days Or some shit And it, it was good the next and time And then I was like Yo I'm like I'm kind of craving this shit I get it again I'm craving it Yeah like I might need to good. go again man Bro I, It's weird Like every I, I've never Met somebody And this sounds People are gonna think I'm making this shit up I've never met somebody That liked in and out Their first time trying it Nah I didn't like it Their first time I only had it once so I was yeah. like That's oh, nasty Bro But like I said, maybe I'll try it again, but I had, I remember my first time in Los Angeles. It wasn't even on no uh, tour shit or nothing. Just went out there to hang out. And next to my Airbnb was a Jack in the Box. I can't smoke in the Airbnb. This Airbnb was weird. This Airbnb was a hallway. This is the weirdest Airbnb I ever LA booked. be having the weirdest Airbnb. Weirdest bro. shit ever weirdest I've ever Airbnb seen in my Airbnb, life, bro. bro. This shit was a little like an apartment. You walk in. And whoever owned the building made every room a fake an apartment. So it was a bed, big TV, and a big bathroom. Yeah. But just a bed, room, TV. TV so big, you got to like, it got a curve, and you got to walk in. So every room is different. Yeah. Like it was the weirdest shit, and there's a front door and a back door. I'm like, yo, so I'll just go outside and smoke. And I went to Jack in the Box. I said, I'm hungry. Let me go eat this. Fire. Dip them fries in ranch. Over, I think they have a special ranch sauce too. That shit, I didn't is try fire. Ranch. I'm be eating ranch. fire. I'm telling you, fire. That, that fire. they put crack in them fries. I'm uh, telling you, Jack in the Box. Be gas, I'm telling you, bro. bro. I eat. I'm telling. You, I eat some good food, bro. I know the good spots. Um, one year I went to like all the steakhouses in Boston. Roof Chris still number one. Really? It's still up there. I, I, I can't even say nothing. I ain't been the Roof Chris. No, Roof Chris. Roof, Roof Chris got it because well, depends on location. Do not. I repeat. Do not go to the one in Boston. It's yeah. nasty. Um, I don't know what they do over there. Bad business. Go to the Waltham one. Fire. Fire. I want I want to top three steakhouses from you. I'm top curious. three steakhouses? I'm a, I'm a steak connoisseur. <laughs> I love steak, bro. Like I said, Rue Chris is up there. Number one. Yeah. Um, what's that spot in Seaport? Mastros? Mastros, yeah. I was gonna Mastros say Mastros is tough. Mastros and the Abe one and Louis corner. are tied. Abe and Louis is deaf there. Bro. Yeah, they, so that's my three, but I can't figure who to put last. Yeah. Because Abe and Louis, fire. They're shit, bro. Fire. Like I'm always every time Mastros in there, I'm stuck between, bro. Abe and Louis, man. Fire. And yo. then yo, 
best place to go on date is Abe and Louie, though, because they have this thing with the drinks. They put the drink in the ice. Yeah, like, nah, I mean, I'm telling you. Abe like, and Louie's outside, too, be hitting different in the summer. In the in summer. The summer but outside. I'm not an outside sitter. Yeah, in the summer, it'd be fire, though. People spot fire. me. <laughs> Yo, I, want, I haven't sauce. had a good steak in Mad Long, bro. Mastro's is my shit, though. I met Dre. First time I ever went to Mastro's was in LA, and I met Dr. Dre in there. First Dr. Time. Dre? Yeah. At bro. Mastro's? Yo, this was like pre COVID and shit. So I'm walking. I think I've told this story in the podcast before. I'm fucking. It might have been my second time at Mastro's, but I'm at the Mastro's, like in Beverly Hills, like two streets over from Rodeo. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm walking out, and then fucking my dad, like, taps me. He's like, and I'm just like, yo, Dre, can I get a picture? And I used to make, bro, I, I haven't made beats in like probably like 10 years, but I made beats in middle school. Oh. So I'm talking to him about making beats. I was in like eighth grade, maybe ninth grade at this point. Um, I'm talking about making beats and stuff. I talked to him for like two minutes, yo. And then he shook my hand and said, have a good day. All I see is mad flashes because it was pre-COVID, so all the paparazzi and yeah, shit. Yeah, they're waiting out. for him. I ain't never seen a motherfucker yeah. do no Houdini shit on me, bro. This motherfucker... <laughs> I was talking to him one sec. I turned away for a sec because I saw a camera flash. No way. No else. Found. Like, this motherfucker straight teleported. Though. I seen, um, let me see if I, have I ran into a celebrity um, unexpectedly? The steakhouses. Who's the dude? Uh, I ran into a, I went to a steakhouse in Miami and ran into Bam and Kevo. Oh, fucking. I'm a dumbass. That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. In Miami? Yeah, it was, um, that's my favorite steakhouse too over there. Um. It's my favorite one. Is it Prime? Prime. Who did I? Prime. I ran into fucking Prime. I was gonna say I ran into someone there. It's funny I'm going to Miami. I went there Saturday. like three, four times. Bro, that shit. Every is time I go to Miami, I go there. Right. Prime. It was on on. The, it was near the beach, and I see this like Rolls Royce truck in front. But there's this random girl laying. I'm like, yo, why are you uh, laying on someone's Rolls Royce? <laughs> like, yo. I'm waiting for my car. This time, this time, this time I went. I wasn't nowhere financially as good I am now. So I was renting a Toyota RAV4 Highland. It was nice, but it wasn't what the that was. So I'm waiting for the valet to bring it up. You know, they have to go yeah. hide the car. You know what I mean? It's not a nice they put in the front. So I'm walking out, and I all I see is, like, I'm standing there on the other side of the car. So, like, as I'm in the street, all I see is a security guard. Excuse me, sir. That's what he said to me. And I see Bam Man Kevo. I'm like, oh shoot, what's good, bro? Da, 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 da. Yeah. That was mad weird. And then um that was it. The other time, I n I wanna say celebrity. Um this summer, um, it was like my birthday celebration for privilege. We do this event in the summer. But Jason Tatum popped out. That's crazy. He had a blast. I was DJing, he had a blast. That's he was trying crazy, to pay for bro. more hours. <laughs> That's crazy. So, yeah. He came through. And that was funny because uh just him trying to get in the building. People driving by, he's about to crash their car to see him. Yo, that so. shit's crazy. You saying that? Because I was about to say I met mad celebrities in Miami. Mm -hmm. Tatum's rookie year, this motherfucker was on our flight, bro. My high school senior trip, it was Tatum's rookie year. Yeah. This dude, we met him in the airport. Everything, this motherfucker was on our flight to Miami. Oh, that was God. a good year for him too. It was random, but it was like right, right when he got drafted. Like it was like it was like May. Of that year before he played, yo, the, like homie shit. got some ill progression, yo. That Celtics, dude, man, I gotta give it to him because you can literally see it. Him, yo, you can see it like they're like around our age, right? Uh, oh, I'm I'm 28, so they're like a little bit younger, but you can yeah. see the progression of their like athleticism in their bodies. Like you could tell they're actually lifting, eating right, Bro, it's like it's LeBron. Because when I mean? met him, fucking how old is Tatum now? He has to be like 20. Cause I'm five twenty four, so he's a couple years. Old. Yeah, cause I'm twenty two. Cause yeah. I remember being like everyone. Cause I was with my friends, we were going down there. And he has to be. If you're twenty two, he's twenty four. I think. I think he's because some shit like that. You said it was your senior year. Yeah, my senior year. He gets I one year in the league. One year. Did he do? He did one year. I think he did one year. Before. And then he went. Yeah, he's like so 24, he's 25. 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. You know I mean, that shit is crazy though. But he popped out, you uh, know. Then hanging with Millie's, I always run into celebrities. And oh, yeah. It's just normal. I was going to say, bro, that that we got we can't go to this podcast without touching on this. Fucking your whole relationship with Millie's. I'm curious how that started in the first place, but then also just the whole entire tour life. <laughs> this is, yo, it's crazy because um, he might not recant this. He might not recant, but I'm from Cambridge, right? He's from Cambridge. Yeah. So growing up, I always knew of Millie's. 
He was always big in the city. I just assumed you guys rap. grew up together. No, no, no. He's older than me. But um, he's a little bit older than me. But I always knew of him for rap. Like, everyone in the city of Cambridge knew him for rap. And Boston. He's already big. You know what I mean? He was big to us. He had this little, uh, not little, it's this, uh, I remember the album. I think it was White Boy Like Me. And then you'll see it all around Cambridge. My uncle have it in his car. I mean, he's cool. He's really cool. My uncle, they like grew up together. So, Damn. boom, he'll have the um the tape, and it'll be all these dudes from his side of Cambridge, um on the on the front cover. So we, because we're from different sides, but they're right next to each other. You know what I mean? Like we could walk from our side yeah, to yeah. his side. It's not like uh, the other sides all the way near El I mean, that's mad yeah. far. So, boom, basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically what. What had happened was I remember he already was he already got out of you know he tells a story how he's in New York a lot yeah so I did a podcast a DJ that opened a podcast and uh, I think it was BNF I think they BNF podcast oh that's fine so I think that was them before they got to where they at now uh, um, shout out to them that yeah. Shit, yeah so we did something at venue and they booked Millie's in um. What had happened was <laughs> My bad for the audio Nah I don't though. care I don't care turn it down any I can hear I can hear So basically what happened was Millie's and us took a picture I still have the picture of Him, my cousin King Fire um, Apes All of us took a picture At a venue And um, that's the first time I actually seen him Right Then um, But how it really came about Is I'm part of the Headbanger DJs Which DJ Viper Is his original DJ um, Viper When he can't make it I make it so and we DJ the same way, so I just start coming around. But when you're from Cambridge, bro, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't feel like you don't know each other because the city is so it's it's its own vibe. It's not like Boston where people like really trying to figure out where you from. Over here, yo, it's actually love. Like people really fuck with each other. Like it's always entwined. You know what I'm saying? Like people really like it's mad cool. So like the way he act. And the way I act, it's the same, it's the yeah, same yeah. vibe. Like, bro, it's the same vibe. So it doesn't even feel like he didn't know me. Or he might have heard my name, but I knew of him. You know what I mean? From when I was very, very young. And that's just due to the fact that he's uh he's just always rapping. And then he was already big on the Boston scene. And then when he got out of here, he got bigger. So that's really what happened. It wasn't nothing like... He knew me since I was young, but I knew of him since I was young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's always big. To me, he's always big. But to us in the city and people around Boston, he was big. You know what I mean? But now, he's out of here. Yeah. He's over there. He's out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm glad to be where I'm at. I'm glad to be DJing for him. I'm glad I learned from him. Like, the conversations we have, me and him personally, be crazy. But sometimes it just be me and him. Talking after the show in his in his hotel room or something you have to link up talk about what we thought happened and it'll just be the illest conversation you wouldn't even expect. Like man, people don't even know the type of risk you take as a rapper, like, especially him. Like people don't know understand the risk. People think this thing is like oh glamorous and all that. Nah, man, these things really happen, man. The road is crazy, man. Like, trust me, like bro, I got stories, he got stories. <laughs> Yo, yo! Every, I swear, everything, every um, stop, every show, it's a story, bro. God damn! Like, yo, I'm telling you, bro, it's a story. It's a, it's a um, blessing in disguise, cause like, you never know, bro. Like, the shit is grateful. Is it? I'm telling you, the stages, the fans, from merch to uh, after parties to even um, traveling. Crazy, 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 crazy. Wow. Like, and one thing about touring, you got to be built for it. You got to be built for it. Everyone from management, DJ, merch, merch manager, tour agent, Millie's. We all got to be built for it. We got to um, wake up every day, get to the next city, settle in the next city, check the venue. I got to do sound. It's nonstop. It's really a job, uh, but it's worth it in the end. Like the experience, like 
I, there's never a time I went to another venue and don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Because you literally learn the ins and outs. And then you learn how to take care of yourself with the social media. Like, I learned all that from bro. Like, I wasn't doing all this. I was doing funny shit, and he told me, yo, stick with that funny shit, man, because he said this in the car. He said, yo, stick with that funny shit because it's going to get you real far, bro. You're mad funny. That's it. That's it. I'm telling you, but he always been big in my eye. Like, he's been rapping forever. But that one, I remember that one mixtape, and he had mad people on the tape, bro, like on the front. It was his whole neighborhood. Boom, everyone on it. White boy like me. That was, that was... That was ringing bells in Cambridge. Like I said, he's in yeah, there. Tell him to turn the sub off. My bad. <laughs> tell him to turn the sub off and turn it down. My bad. Where's that? The big room right here? Yeah, bro. Oh. They're bumping. I'm like sitting there. I saw him looking. I'm like, bro, my bad. You no, I'm good. I can hear it. Yeah, bro. That shit is OD loud. It sounds good, but <laughs> this shit is OD, OD The sub loud, is hitting. Bro. Yeah, that's what I mean. They been turn the sub off for now, bro. That I shit. didn't... Um, Put Shit. subs in my studio Because I don't want my neighbors complaining Yeah, they're gonna come Bro, we're on our last strike With our noise complaints Oh, damn We're on our last strike You can't strike. even hide You can't get the bass out Bro, like, that's the thing You even can put bass drops in. Even turning the sub on Bro, weekdays We can't um, We can't do shit without headphones Until 3pm Oh okay. Every weekday every Yeah, because these are other, other Yeah, dudes. bro right. But the fucked up part they, none of them watch it So I don't even give a fuck If they do watch it They make fucking Airplane soundproofing over there And the place right next to us They make airplane soundproofing Right here? So, right there So all day they got Mad machines and shit Going on Making mad noise Bro mad noise like but Airplane's second, mad loud Bro that's what, like And they're making all that shit Like fucking Handcrafting the insulation And all mm-hmm. the soundproofing shit for it That makes no sense Yeah bro But they be complaining All the fucking time bro No, That's probably why Because they're trying to hear it Soundproofing yeah, You guys <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. he turn it down? No, nah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. It's, as long as it don't mess up your um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. No, nah, I'm just. I always, I always geek out when it gets that loud. I geek out a little bit. Okay, okay. Making okay. sure. But That's you're not. Sure. You're not one of the quiet motherfuckers, bro. I be having motherfuckers that be like, yeah, yeah you don't know how to talk. And then yeah. when it does that, the fucking music is louder than them. And I put the filter on, and the shit will cut out their voice instead of the fucking music. Oh no, nah, I'm I'm excited. Yo, when I when he um Bryce asked me, we did a show in uh Springfield recently. There's uh, the Weed Fest, something like that. Uh, weed uh, Halloween, what we call it? What was it? Uh, I forget. Weed and Halloween, some crazy shit. It was Millie's and Afro Man. So he told me, yo, I got a podcast. And I'm like, yo, finally, I have another opportunity. So I'm like, I was wondering, you know what I mean? Like, what it's going to be about, man. I'm having fun already. I mean, this is what bro. I do. I hey, like it. I'm happy you having fun, bro. I love I'm it. I already. Fun, I'm already walking around like, yo, this is the studio? <laughs> yeah. like, I already signed the wall. I'm right, like, yo. You came in, bro. You came in on good good was, ass energy. I was ready. Bro. I was like, yo, I'm ready to go, man, because I just love it, bro. I love anything that has to do with entwined to what we got going on. You know what I'm telling you? But especially Cakes asking me, he never asked me to do shit. So <laughs> he asked me to do something. Like, Fuck you. Shout oh, yeah. out Bryce, bro. I Shout appreciate out Bryce, Bryce for fucking throwing me. Yeah, actually do shit. He go missing, though. I was just telling him, <laughs> Bryce, stop acting like we don't see you at these shows. You are right. You do be low. Cause I, House of Blues, I don't know what happened. You start pancaking you dead. I'm like, where you go? And they come, yo, the show's great, right, Twit? Like, yo, bro, where was you at? Like, he's not even, he just, uh, he's behind the scenes. He's really behind the scenes. Uh, I got to give it to him because he'll, he'll pop up, sound check. Yo, what's up, y'all? And you're like, yeah. what up, Bryce? Dude? Show, gone. Don't see him. Yeah. Dang, back Like oh yo It was very I was like yo dope. Did you go to the car or something Like fuck wow. you go Like mm, He's really low key I gave it to him He's nice at disappearing He's nice He's he's a magician He'll dead He be fucking Behind the scenes as fuck But if you're watching this video And you made it this far And you want to see Bryce On a podcast Comment that shit below Yeah I Put Bryce in the comments him. Because bro. If you want to see Bryce up here he, He's the mastermind I want to pick his brain bro Cause yo. he's a slept on mastermind bro Yo he's really nice he's At what he do though His marketing bro. strategies His management skills He's a great He's great yo, Shout out to him Cause he sent me like a checklist He went through the YouTube one day I still gotta get on the shorts So don't get mad at me Because I need to get on that shit I need that I'm checklist myself accountable. Bro he sent me like a list Of a couple different things to do And one of them was The most simple thing Is putting hashtags in the description And I swear to god Right after I started doing Why that Why you tell me that Bro I need to do that I don't even put <laughs> hashtags Yo 
<laughs> I'm telling you, like, Yo, bro, I'll, I need that list. Yeah, I'll tell you. you. It, it was like it was only like two or three things. It was mad simple. Mm-hmm. But I did it, and then right after just doing one of the things, I saw the fucking views. Yeah, the views up go up. Yep. Yeah, I did a couple. Uh, I posted a couple of ECAP videos. Um, I posted a couple. Um, I remember one time Big Night Live, me and Viper had it going crazy on G Nipsey set. Just got off tour. I think we just got back from the Apollo Theater that day. Yeah, the next day we had to go Big Night Live. It was the baby show. Um, G Nipsey, boom, turned that shit up. Um, man, we got mad. I mad, bro. I don't know, man. All I can say is this hip hop entertainment DJ life. You gotta be built for this, yo. <laughs> I'm telling you, you gotta be built for this. It's not easy. It's not as glamorous as it sees as you see it. Bro really works mad hard. Like Millie's really worked mad hard, man, to make it where he is. Cause like I said, he was already big. If you knew him back then, he was already big. He could have been like, I'm fine with this. Nah, he really take it to the next level, bro. He understands what he's doing, what's going on. And then he his fans, like, I just want to say shout out to all of them because and all the listeners and the new people, they really support. Like, they show mad love. Like, bro, I got gear at home. A pile of gear just from them. Damn, bro. Just from them. I That's swear to God. Cool. Even this is not from fan. This is a high tolerance. I'm in a high tolerance. This is this is um one of you know one of the weak you know yeah. saying? He's part of them. So shout out to them, high tolerance for uh, hooking me up. But um, I got gear at the crib. Be wearing their hoodies around, just chilling. Like yo, I, I, where I get this from? When people be like, yo, where you get that? I be like, man, they gave it to me. Like, ah, whatever. I'm telling you. Telling you, bro. Throughout everything, like, what do you feel like some of your biggest adversities you faced along the way? Is talking about how everything's not easy. You um, personally, for me, um, well, when I first started DJing, um, people will tell me things like it's hard to get a hip hop night in Boston. They kind of like, they kind of gave up on hip hop at the moment at that time. Um, people were scared. Uh, I never been scared outside. I don't. I think Boston's safe as hell. Um, you go to the club. It's only maybe someone might have problems with someone, but I never really. None of my events I seen a fight. I'm surprised. None of my events I seen a fight, bro. I've been DJing for years. If it was a girl fight, I don't even count it as a fight. They ain't doing nothing to each other. Yeah. Just pulling. Yeah, hey, get off each other. Hey, yeah. I'll see you later, bitch. Some shit like that. So. They always like um, single out hip hop, bro, and that was the the biggest thing. So like, even bro, I feel like he had problems here. He'll tell you, um, with with venues and like getting blocked out. But now, please try and block him out now. <laughs> you need him. You get what I'm saying? Now hip hop is the biggest thing. Um, even though we're at a weird spot in streaming, like even the biggest clubs around here are booking hip hop artists. Um, we just had Uzi here And they're bringing him back here Black Friday I didn't right? even know they're bringing him back here that I was soon. just checking my email today They're bringing him back But the only problem is I will say about certain clubs You guys really need to fix your music um, I don't think you need to EDM out everything Like keep it original You know what I mean Like I know what game you're playing You know what I'm saying The game they're playing They're trying to uh, Not make it so urban and that's corny. Like, uh, everywhere else, don't do that. Only us. Like, I don't know if they're worried about the insurance being extra high, but you should worry about the door price because if you put it up and you have big artists you bring in here, um, you won't have that problem. But I know hip-hop doesn't come with the most support financially, but uh, you could block out violence by people not – People won't pay to go in there if they don't feel like the price is right. Yeah. So just try and work on your um, because right now we're having a problem. Like, um, clubs be kind of empty, bro. Um, I seen a big DJ come out here. I won't mention his name. It's a DJ I look up to, but he was up. He was out here Sunday, and um, I seen people Facetime me. I didn't go. Um, I don't really get to go out no more. I get. I feel like I get fucking stampede sometimes. With questions 
So I don't like going out, and I don't even. I'm not. Yeah, yeah but there's as no much need. As you, yeah, but I feel the. Every time I go out, bro, it's just like fucking. Why aren't you DJing? Or do my yeah, bro? I get kind of haggled sometimes. I ain't gonna hold you in the you know DJing for bro. People asking for a podcast for a podcast so like shit, type. Bro, you get what I'm saying? So I'll stay in the crib sometimes. Just yeah. don't keep mixing, doing, keep progressing my career. Doing sun practicing at least sun thirty yeah. minutes a day. I practice. Or getting you time. Yeah, I, just that yeah. Personal time. Bro. Personal time matters. So um, it was just it looked like a cereal bowl because everyone's standing around the side of the club, and then the homie got on. He paid him a lot to come here. He's a big DJ, yep. and everyone moves to the middle then. But the club is still kind of empty, uh. and I feel like with that, that comes with. I know we're in a financial time. Boston's very expensive. To be going out to the club paying sixteen dollars for a drink. Yeah. By the time you get one cup, it's twenty dollars. That shit. I get that, man. right? But there's also not a need to go out no more because you guys gotta fucked it up for years. You know what I mean? Security used to be assholes to people. Not per se me. I don't even think I pay anymore. <laughs> wow. I think everyone knows me by now. Yeah. Like I'm cool with everyone. I introduce myself to a lot of people, so um I don't really get charged, but um, I think the problem is with people, they don't like what's when they went to the club, their first experience or something. Some people might only went to the club once and be like, I'm not coming back. I was going to say, I've been, I used to go, I had a fake ID at like fucking 15. So I was huh? going to clubs mad, but I've been 21 for like a year and a half. I yeah. dead ass gone out to like club clubs like yeah. two times. Two, see, two some times people, when time. they turn 21, they go every weekend. Yeah, bro. Know what I mean, I, that's what until it wears I out. Graduated with, bro. But I got, I got that shit out of my system when I was young. But well, how now, did you feel bro, about the music? When I went, bro, I can't even lie. The couple times I did go out, I don't remember the music. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> some people, if, if it was a good shit. night, you'll remember. Yeah, like, trust me, remember. trust me. I don't remember it, none of that. The shit. DJ, the DJ's good. He'll call out people in the crowd. They be the, playing white girl music every place I went out. I'll say that. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's something wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, to a certain extent, when you're trying to gear the club to probably impress the owner and try to keep the night safe, it's, it's safe with whatever. Music's not going to make someone wild out. Like, you could play, what, yeah. you saying Millie's going to make people start I know, that's fighting? That's what I mean. But then you go to, like, I won't hear no, like, Meek, nothing like that. You go to a club in Miami. You'll hear Meek. And you're like, Rick yo, Ross. this shit's actual good fucking music. Man, bro. I heard Fredo banging, um, and I took that. I went to um club, what was it, Story? I seen the Migos, this went take off. This was recently. Damn, I went during the Rolling Loud time. This was before Rolling So I went, I left Miami the day Rolling Loud started. So everyone Damn. was already loaded in. Yeah. Seen Bobby Schmurda and uh, the Migos. So this is recently because Bobby Schmurda just got out. Yeah. And um, I remember the entrance fee was 100. My cousin's birthday, so I'm like, you know what? I'll pay for both of us to go in here and have a blast. I see Zoe Dollars. I actually get to talk to Zoe Dollars because um, shout out to Jets. I'm cool with his man. He wasn't there. I'm uh-huh. actually with his Jets. So we right there with them. And um, basically, there's a song by Fredo Bang. And um, it goes, My Mama Stepper. Uh, I'm trying to remember that song. Um, whatever. That song would never be played here at first. Wow. They don't play at first. Shit. I went to um, Sexy Red's concert. Shout out Ash. She put me on the guest list, her tour manager. Damn. We cool. It's team tour agency. That's fine. Mac, shout out Mac Agency and all them. That's fine. Um, I remember the DJ, he played some tracks that were fire. He played a boozy one, though, and they didn't bite. Damn. But then he noticed it. He's like, yo, we up north, north. Like, yeah, up north, north. He switched that to the, the next song was a banger. And I thought that was great. I'm like, yo. Boozy song was a banger to me. I'm over here like I probably was the only one in the crowd. You set that shit up. Yeah. All right. But then, like I said, shit just like I said, y'all need to stop playing it like that. That's one thing. That's only one thing. Stop playing it like that. Stop gate and they gatekeep venues. I'm like, it's kind of weird. Right, so you ever had this instance where uh, people know your podcast? Yeah. They'd be like, "Yo, you podcasting?" Like act like they don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Stop doing that. Wow. Stop doing that. Stop hating. Um, but main thing is stop trying to like it's like they're trying to water down the music. It's like, yo, let people be them. Um I think DJ should have their laptop to the side. 
not in front of them. Like if you DJing, that that irks me. If you have your, your laptop in front, like if the crowd's in front of me and the deep, the laptop's right, I can't see who's in front of me. Yeah. Like how possible? I'm gonna just be looking at the laptop, not even look up. Like hey, uh, you know what I mean? No, stop doing that. Um, but for me, the challenge is where's the urban events at? Um, we have some good events. Um, I can name some. Um, shout out to DJs that have been killing it. Um, I ran into him the other day, Real P. DJ Real P. Damn. He had an R&B event that has been cranking. Huh. Shout out, keep the DJ super, Superstar P2. They have another R&B event that be cranking. Um, the, those urban events do really good. Like, always pack. Always girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fellas, you need to get in there because there's always girls. Like, if the, you want to see groups of girls go out with the girls, they're there. You know what I mean? So those are good urban events. Um, shout out to them for always, uh, like, letting me write in. I mean, they never, like, I, there's people that probably never wanted me in the door. It's probably still like that to this day. Um, but I just feel like that watered down, uh, you see how you said the white girl music? Like, there's a place for that. There's a place for that Taylor Swift. That's near Fenway. Go over there. Yeah. Don't. I shouldn't be in the seaport. I shouldn't be in uh, downtown. Cause those people ain't even there. Unless you're going to the big one, Royale. Which they don't really have. I've been to one urban event in there, and that was uh, Wiz Khalifa and Currency. But that was a private event. Damn. That was a private event. It wasn't really broadcasted. You really had to be their fans to know. Damn. So. Yeah, get what I'm saying? Uh, it wasn't publicized as Wiz Khalifa's gonna be here, yeah. but if Pauly D walks in here. Oh, Pauly D got me. I was D. gonna say they do shit like that. That's one problem with everything. Is just they don't. When there's hip hop shit, that's like real hip hop shit. Yeah. The city don't promote it. Like they don't that. promote it, bro. but they'll promote fucking the traffic for fucking Taylor Swift. The Taylor Swift, like yo, she's all the way in Foxborough. Yeah, bro. And um, no offense to Taylor Swift, I do know the nineteen what is nineteen eighty eight, nineteen eighty nine album, fuck. whatever. I used to work at this spot, and they used to make me demo that um, album. Yeah. I know Taylor Swift. It's just the music, so whatever, like to me. And uh, I was saying this to someone the other day. I feel like there's no uh, seasoning in it. <laughs> like in 1989, it's 1989. I remember. I'm like, yo, all right, New York. This is New York. And I'm like, yo, I. I'm looking for the creativity, and but it's just because she got good fans, good market, a lot of record label push. Yeah. So I'm not going to diss her, but all I'm saying is y'all got to stop playing it like that because Boston, you guys are making us. People come here. Yo, them rappers come here. They just want their check now. Yeah. Like, they don't do more. I bet you they go to Miami, they do more the most Definitely. they want to ever do, Definitely, man. Bro. Like, because when I went, we did a show in Miami, Shit, that shit was packed out. Yeah. Packed out, bro. Fucking packed. We had the best time. We had our cars parked inside the venue. God damn. Yo, we had the Lambo. And it was a great time. But artists do that there. They come here, they're like, let me get in this truck. I know I'm getting, yo, they get way more than they need to out here. Yeah. Like, they're paying artists. Wow, Brad. I can imagine, bro. But the thing is, then they're playing first class flights. They're playing hotel rooms. They even giving. I seen. I know one big DJ. I was hanging with him. He's another big. He's very big, very very big. And I was hanging with them in the smoking room. Smoking room. I was smoking. Um, what's that hotel? Envoy. And they're across from. It's across from the federal courthouse. Huh. Biggest hotel. We wanna, I'm smoking They're smoking weed In the room I'm like oh, We can smoke And they're like Yeah bro We good I'm like yeah. What's this A smoke room They're like yeah I'm like Oh shit alright So like I said They get They come here And make their bread They might even stay Two nights bro That's how much bread They make here But It's like Stop doing that Like stop Blocking That from happening The fun yeah. Like you're gonna just Hurt When it dies down And people are just like Alright we seen Everyone we needed to see And we didn't have Really that much fun it's just gonna go on to the next generation, and this generation just dies down. Like that's why you have events here that are thirty plus, because people or forty plus they feel like yo we can't go where we want to go because it's slow, and over here trying to block something, and it's not dangerous. Like 
You don't hear mass shootings here. You don't hear that shit. Like the police do policing. They got the they get mad money. They'll be outside the club. So yeah. that's all it is. It's just Boston just got to work on uh, urban events. Um, they got better. It's still just watered down. So they'll have the Uzis. Uzis kind of rock. So that's not really it. But man, we got more venues now. Um, I would say that helps. We got MGM now. We got Roadrunner. Um, those got bigger capacity. Like, but who who are you letting in the door? Like, is the question. Because me, um, I don't think it's how I look or anything with race, but um, I do think some people get an easier culturally. So, like. They'll be so quick to throw a Spanish event. You know what I'm saying? Like, then an urban event or yeah. a black cultural event. It's so, it's, it's kind of weird like that. Yeah. It's like, no one's trying to go out and harm people. And they talk about, um, it might be something with the business though, bro. As I get into business, man, it's a good question. Do you think, and this is, I know this is your problem. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think something about business insurance? Do do it go up when they say what kind? Do they have to tell them what kind of people's in the venue? No, but one thing I will say is everyone that I have to deal with whenever there's an issue, yeah, it turns to oh, so like what kind of people are in your business? Whatever, not just with insurance, but whether it's landlord, yeah, like anything like that, there definitely is issues. Yeah, with like that like type of shit. And as you get into business and you talk about real estate and. Because a club is still commercial property It's still commercial yeah. business Do they think about their value or something Like is it like what's the taint Like what's making y'all bro. act like that they, they be dickheads like when we first moved in here Yeah Um. Obviously you know Norwood Nor- Yeah oh. Norwood's like yeah Bro all, that's why all of our neighbors hate us bro Because it's like we're the youngest people mm-hmm. Everyone that owns businesses around here Is easily 20-30 years older than mm-hmm. us um, in their 50s Yeah but also mad random shit bro I had someone that was giving someone a haircut in here yeah. Like literally came here Gave somebody a haircut in that room mm-hmm. Dipped out I'm in my office I just see mad blue lights So I'm like what the fuck Tell me why I go out Bro literally is walking out Just just did a cut Walking out to his car I go out there There's four cruisers out there. Why? Four cruisers And I'm like I go out I'm like yo what the Like I'm like what's going on Whatever um, and they're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I own the business right here. They're like, what are you guys doing harassing my client? They're like, what do you mean your client? I'm like, this is a recording studio. We hear blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I thought this place got shut down. I'm like, no, that was the past owner. I don't throw parties like the past owner. Yeah. Like, I'm like, this is like a recording studio. We've been here for two years, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, well, your client was um acting sketchy. He was getting in his car, whatever. And I literally said to the cops, I'm like, what? Because he's a black dude in a predominantly See? white town. See? And the cops just shut the fuck up. They let the dude go right after and that. And that's weird. Like, a cop bro. would do that because if you think of business. Or, think about it. My bad to cut you off. No, nah, go ahead. Dude, walk into his car. Four cruisers. That's crazy. Four cru- and you see it, what, The parking lot's mad in, small, you bro. You see where we are. We're yeah. in an industrial park. We're we at the even, end of the street. Yeah, we ain't <laughs> even by nowhere. So I walk, I walk out, and I thought, I'm thinking there's one cop. I see four cops. They got to stop watching movies. They probably thought the briefcase Yo, I was, <laughs> was some like, shit in yeah. the um, Bad Boys movie with the drugs like, and the money. <laughs> I'm like, dog's giving it. They got to stop watching movies, yo. Yo, I'm telling you, yo, it's weird because you would think the police would protect you. Because if you're a business, that's what they're here for. It's for you. It's not yeah. for the citizen. They're not like you own. You're you're contributing in taxes to the city, which pays them. It's like a property owner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you contribute in taxes to pay them. So you gotta listen to me, buddy. I got the say over you. Not you know what I mean? So that's kind of weird. I'm telling you. I'm starting to think. Is it a business thing? Like if I opened a club, I don't even know. or event space. I always wanted an event space. So I'm still dreaming of that. Um. Does your type of clientele affect your insurance and you have to think like that? Probably do to an extent. Probably do just because about the shit though. Just because the weird part is why do you guys play it down like that when the consumers, the bottles go in the air? They're my people. One thing I will say, and I hate to push this narrative, but I gotta say it being a business owner. Mm-hmm. 
motherfuckers do ruin it for themselves to an extent because there's, yes. there's mad shit, bro, that I'd be having to argue in. Like, this studio's got vandalized like three times. Uh-huh. People crossing out how you were saying, I don't want to cross. Yeah, I don't want to cross people's names. I have motherfuckers coming here with spray paint, crossing people's names out. That's weird. People writing whatever block K on the fucking wall, all that shit. Outside? No, on the fucking wall right, oh, right there. Oh, right here. And that right shit. Here. That shit to us, bro, like when that shit happens, we get pissed off because to us, that's just a symbolism of the un- Like all DOD yeah. stands for is just the unity. We don't give a fuck. You could have somebody that killed your fucking cousin. If we can uh-huh. get you guys in the room together, that's what this shit's about. Yeah, it's not shit. about who's yeah. cooler. Yo, that's so I mean. it remind me of the um, people mad at homie for the Marco interview. Yeah. It's like if I came in here damaging your shit, throwing your mic. Like, bro, that's no respect for yeah. what you got going on. But you're right. Some people do mess it up for themselves. Straight some up, some people just don't know how to be good neighbors. Um, I had to read a book on that, bro. I read a book, um, an audio book, and it's just it's like how to win your friends over. Is in, it how to win it. friends and influence people? Yes, that I one. That, shit. that book that right shit. there, bro. It teaches people, and it's not even teaching me. It's just reminding me of. How, like, it's just the little things you might forget. Like, how to remember someone's first name. Yeah. Yo, that's actually very hard. You know what I'm saying? Bad like, ass, sometimes bro. people come to me, yo, twin. Da, da, da. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to remember homie from somewhere. And I'll yeah. I'll have a, it'll give me 10 minutes. I'll remember, oh, yeah, that's homie from da, 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 da. Yeah, but I feel bad because I'll still say what's up. I'm not going to be like, I don't know you. Who are you? But if they ask me who are you, remember me? I'm going to be like, uh, I'm trying, bro. You just remind me, da, da, da. But yeah. it's always good to uh. We, the little things matter Like if I remembered Your birthday up, yeah. I remember your kid's birthday yeah, remember, That matters like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying Some people just don't Remember that stuff So that's That's one thing About the respect level And uh, just doing the right thing But if people came in here And spray painting Other people You see how I was I'm like I'm not yeah, crossing No one's name random, out in here That's messed bro. up But I like that wall That wall's fire Appreciate it But bro. Pe- doing that is crazy They like, do shit like that bro Motherfuckers come here And leave mad trash We got no smoking in here Which sucks yeah. But it's because of our landlords had somebody last week smoking the fucking studio, bro. Like, all types of random shit, and it'd be like... People get in the studio and start smoking. Like, bro, that's yeah. not going to help you rap. And it's like, I'm sitting here. I've been fighting with my landlord about X, Y, and Z, and y'all doing exactly yeah. what they're fucking accusing me of and shit. Yo, people got to learn. Oh, Yo, you know what? That's another thing about consumers, though. So, um, one thing is I own a bunch of cars, right? I own a lot of cars. I'm in love with cars. Damn, I am, too. I love um, cars, bro. I love cars. I rent them out, too. Some of them. I do, uh, like, car sharing apps yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So, rental car company. My all boy that. does that shit. Shit's fire, right? But one thing I had to learn is some people, and this happens in the club, some people feel like since they're here and they're paying, that they can do what they want. Yeah. It's like a renter. So, some people feel like, oh, I can smoke in here. Right, because I'm renting a car. No, you can't. I'm still going to charge you the fee. It's my car. Oh, not not this app or whatever, whatever. Yeah, not the insurance. It's my car. So, boom. Some people feel like they can do that, and like, or they go to the club and stand on the couch like that's paying the whole rent because they just paid twenty two hundred for four bottles. Yeah, or let's let's be honest. It be it be six hundred twenty dudes on one bottle. Standing on the couch And it's like bro Like be honest with you bro You're not helping at all Like yeah. You ain't paying nothing I ain't paying That just got me through the day Not even through the day Yeah That that's just the light bill For two minutes You know You got the elevators Going up yeah, and down wow. In this club oh, da, da, da. You get what I'm saying So people I had to understand Some consumers Would never understand Until they touch The other side of business Like they'll be like Yo my landlord Getting on my ass Like like a rent Not you guys But like a residential property Yeah And he'd be like Yo you gotta pay your rent on time bro They kinda hurt Yeah bro They only make it $300 Over that rent Straight sometimes up, Like bro. Inflation's eating them up You know what I mean So I know I know what it is Like you said The consumer Someone probably booked the studio And thought Yo What Studio time $8 I'm paying $8 an hour I can't smoke in here Like bro That's on That's not helping me Like yeah. I'd rather you not be here Straight Smoking up, Yeah bro. I get it Most type of people Guess yeah. what? I don't give a fuck how much you paying me. You ain't coming back. You ain't coming back. <laughs> That's how it goes. It, it got to be like that. Some people got to learn the hard way. And the only way they could come back, honestly, and I learned this from that book, genuinely apologize. Show up. Straight say, up. yo, my fault, bro. I was in a fucked up state of mind. And blah, blah, blah. Uh, let me get back to business the yeah. right way. That's how people are supposed to do it, but they don't do know. that. People have mad pride. People Ego don't. problems, bro. They be arguing, bro. I be noticing that on... um. IG people's egos are weird. Yeah, bro. I follow. I, I do unfollow people. 
I don't blame you, bro. I be doing the same shit too. Yeah, when motherfuckers go on the story rants to see that I love this shit, or I'm like, quick that unfollow. Bro. Yeah, I be unfollowing people. They be having weird rant, yeah. um, rants about who should pay their bills, like random shit. Like, like that, yo, bro. you're a human. Yo. You're even supposed to be getting money yourself. Like, you're not supposed to be doing all that bullshit. Like, straight up. Bro. Um, some people just complain about nothing. I seen one homie complain about an NBA player. In the hotel And I'm like Yo He's trying to really sleep Like you can't be really having You're not really supposed to be having Hotel yeah. Parties and This then That like, yeah, wasn't smart bro I'm fucking be wild then bro I'm, I'm telling you Just because they're consumers Like yo you didn't really contribute Now With that $80 you pay for the studio time I have to pay My cleaners to come clean out the studio Yeah people don't realize that shit bro like people never never see shit from a business perspective, bro. Yeah, never. And then cleaners complain like this is dirtier than the usual. Cause I get more money. Inflation hit. Now they want more money to come yeah, clean the bro. studio. And I'm trying to keep it the same price, but you want to smoke it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I I'm I'm in business, so I'm always gonna understand you before the consumer. Yeah, but some people just don't get that through the head. Bro. No, some they're gonna be fucking around. Some people don't. Let me check the. You gotta be out of here in like ten minutes. Yeah. All right. So we'll do. I got like two two more questions. That's I definitely cool. want to get off. If we got more time. Um, but one I want to ask you because you're the first DJ. Can you do me a favor and text them to turn it down? I'm gonna make sure to mention this in tomorrow's meeting about how if I say turn that shit down, that shit stays the fuck down. <laughs> um, but one thing I want to ask you from a DJ perspective. Mm-hmm. Crowd control. I love asking anybody that does anything performance related. I love asking them that. But as a DJ, it's not like you're up there. Obviously, you're yelling and shit. But it's not like you could sit there, move around the stage, do X, Y, and Z. You could. You could do that too. But that's why I'm saying throwing your little flavor in. It, it's like, all right, you're saying you did a thousand shows. Yeah. You ain't do a thousand shows. Not a thousand shows. There. I did it like a thousand yeah, events. A thousand but. events. But you know what I mean. You ain't do yeah. a thousand events, and you're just sitting there like. Nah, <laughs> depends on the event. But I'll tell you, c- crowd control is a big thing. Um, that's the main thing we focus on. Um, you have to know organically what's gonna fly. So, one thing. Um, there's one song I play all the time, and um, I know the crowd's gonna sing it. Um, I usually choose uh, "Stay Scheming," and uh, it's that's the most randomest song, but Damn. the Kobe part, everyone loves that part. Damn. Um, you got to choose songs with a. Um, I always tell people if you want, like, there's. It depends on the crowd too. Like, I ain't gonna be playing Travis Scott around Millie's fans all day. Yeah. Like, what they don't know about that. But I might play Many Men, because Millie's is a lyrical rapper. Yeah. So they want to hear some lyrics. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they come from a different era. But then there's other fans like the Baby's fans. I might play Travis Scott. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you really got to talk to them and let them know. Because if you don't crowd control, if you don't talk, people don't know what direction you're going. And they will literally stand there and look at each other. So that is definitely a big point. You must, must, must talk. As a DJ, if you can't talk, you're going to have an issue. No one's going to know where you're going. Like It's like listening to uh, watching the TV, watching a football game. You can't watch a football game without commentary. They tried that. And you don't know what's going on. If they're not telling you, oh, first and third, Patriots got the ball on the set. They tried it with just – they did this. They did an experiment, a game without commentary. No one knew what was going on. Uh, gotta, you got to crowd control. You got to talk. You just got to say something. If you're nervous, get someone that's not. But if you can't do both, try and find a friend. But usually you could do it yourself. Usually I'm with Viper. He's number one. He's number one with that. He can yeah, he talk to any crowd. He can make the move up. He can make people laugh. We talk about anything. We talk about NCAA in the middle of a set. Trust me. We talk about basketball. The weirdest thing he do. Uh, Viper the sniper. Shout out Viper. Uh, Got to have crowd control. Got to have it. Bro. Last question. Mm-hmm. Kind of tying in with that, but more broader. If you were giving advice to somebody, say it's a kid, they ain't never done a mix, they ain't never done nothing, they're trying to get into DJing. They yeah. don't have the slightest clue about anything. What's one thing you would absolutely advise them to do and one thing that you would advise them absolutely not to do? Um, The first thing I would say to do, um, practice. Don't look for the spotlight first. Um, practice, practice, and again, practice. Um, 
and there's no perf- there's no perfect way to DJing. Um, so people can blend, people can scratch, people can drop, people can just press play. Just make sure that library got all the music you could have. That's all I can say. If you, the library matters. If you have every song possible in the world in one computer, you're you're the best DJ ever because it doesn't. There's no perfect way. Like I love blending, right? I'll blend every track. Like I'll blend a whole party together. You won't even hear a cut. I could cut, but a cut's a scratch. So if you don't know what that is, yeah. but um, I like blend. I like hearing things on top of things. So that's fine with me. You use headphones too. Use your headphones. Stop not using your headphones. But the other question was what you don't recommend. Yeah. Um, what I don't recommend. Um. I don't recommend coming into the game and thinking it's about a look. Some people make it a look. It's weird. Some people like to um, make it a clout thing. Like, what's the perfect way to describe it? Like, all right. Oh, wait. All right. So we, I had a friend. We had a conversation about two DJs. One is really good. One, the Red Bull Challenge, really good. And then one likes to make mixes and then go into, we don't even know what country he's from. He's not from the Caribbean, which is cool. Music is for the world But If you go And just put yourself In the ocean With a DJ board With no wires With a mix playing Like yeah You're like you're fake liking it That's just like Disrespectful in a way To the To the To the greats Of DJing So It's not about clout It's about skill And Don't make it a clout thing Cause that clout's gonna wash up Whatever goes up Comes down I'm telling you Make Really like it. Really love it. Um, go touch a turntable because a lot of DJs ain't touch a turntable. Um, and just really study it. Like really go and learn because I I'm telling you the clock. Like there's no way I'm gonna be sti- we gonna me and you gonna be in the ocean with water in this thing with electricity. Like bro, I'm getting electrocuted today. Stop capping. You know what I mean? Like let's be realistic and get to what it really is. Like yo, are you nice? Because if and don't be giving me or whoever the DJ is before you a list of songs that don't play. That means you're not good because that means you only came here to play these songs. And you might be making more. But at the end of the day, I really like some people really put you to work. You know what I mean? You'd be like, damn. Honestly, I would play those songs. I don't, don't do that to me. Don't give me the songs you don't want me to play. Like, what are you doing? Uh-huh. Like, I'm not going to play hits, but if you... That's what you do. I might play him. I might get disrespectful. <laughs> I might get Dream on Green on you because that's some bullshit. Like, I'm telling you, this became a clout game. And a lot of people don't actually really do good. Um, but they get far. I do the, the but I said, they might get far. They don't really get far. It washes up at one time. You'll be like, all right, we're tired of this. The same set. Like, you could tell when it's pre recorded. I can go next door and make a, a set through Ableton, bro. <laughs> like, right, go right behind us, yeah. behind this wall, and do that, and and play that, and yeah, oh, you're nice. You really, you better talk. Like you said, we just had that conversation. Yeah, you better learn it, cause if you're not nice, it's gonna be ha. Ah. When, when the real, when you see a real DJ, you don't want to be there, and you see sticks coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see sticks, DJ sticks coming, Michael Jordan, and start. Juggling in front of you Hey <laughs> you don't know how to juggle <laughs> I'll tell you there's some, there's some killer DJs out here Um And um I just I just want people to know that It's not what you see The glamour of You see online Just a lot of It's a lot of bullshit online bro It's like Anything online is some Those things are bullshit But Just try and learn Um Learn from the great Ask people bro There's some people that really help you I'll help you Trust me, there's DJs. I'll be like, yo, roll with me. I don't ask you to carry no gear, nothing. Just roll with me. Come to the club, bro. Meet me at the door. We go right in. Um, and you'll just watch and just chill, have a good time, talk to some women over there. Um, me, I'm focused on the tunes. I don't really go in there and be hoping for the women. So don't. If you're really trying to learn, learn. Like, like I said, I'm here to turn the club up, leave, make sure. That when you book me or anyone on my team, the Headbanger Squad, that the crowd that was here is going to return. 
So they're like, yo, that was lit. At least come back next month, next week. That's my job. My job is to make sure the music's good that they want to return. The promoter might bring them, and I'm keeping them. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's it. That's how I feel. So people just got to do Don't Don't come in here with the clout game because it's not a clout game. This is not DJing in the ocean with an SB. <laughs> you got to get electrocuted. <laughs> Any of y'all motherfuckers watching this that you want to DJ, you better listen to this little bit. You better listen to this little bit. I'm telling you. And bro, I, w- I would get deeper in this episode. I wish he didn't have to dip out. We're going to have to do a part two with you in the oh, future. Oh, hell yeah. Be coming me. back. Because I didn't even get to get in your funny side as much. It's probably one of, from what I've seen of you, this is probably one of your like most serious, if not the most serious. I <laughs> Go back. I'll tell you because the way that happened last time, you just got to go back, watch it. You might catch something. You'd be like, oh, yeah. we put this up. I'm telling you. I don't know how that magical thing happened, but that video is my mom's friends came from London and they was like, yo, that's one of the biggest videos ever. I couldn't believe it. That shit is crazy, bro. Yeah, all right. I'm going to have to look through. I'm going to have to do But definitely, we, I'm going to be back. I like this. Back. This is, this is, back, I can do this. We can do this once a month, whatever, man. I don't give a damn. Bro. I like podcasting. I like talking. Bro, I'm going to have to get you back on. I yeah, hell yeah. I got to ask you questions next time. I got to yeah. come up with some questions. Because <laughs> I... I always wanted a podcast, but we're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I'm doing. You'd be good at it. You'd I, I, at I got it. an idea in a, you in a should place. Do it. Yeah, then you come on ours. I do it, bro. Uh, you seem comfortable as fuck. Like most people, bro, come in. They're a little bit timid. Uh, First 10, 15 yeah, minutes, timid. except for the season people. But nah, you came in, bro. I told you. I, I deal know. with crowds. How could I be nervous yeah, here? Bro, yeah, I mean, know. you deal I with know. crowds. I go from, you can go from a 15 room with 15 people. I can be DJing 15 people. And the next day I'm DJing for 25. I just be so confused, bro. Like, uh, that's why, I, that's where the, the, that's where the love comes in. Bro. Can you do it with 15 people? Or can you do it with 2,500? Uh, that's it. Bro, you got anything else you want to add on? Um, major thing. Um, thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, I'll be back. Um, shout out everyone. Um, shout out all DJs doing it. Shout out Boston. Um, shout out you guys. Shout um, out you. Because um, if there's no platforms, there's no one. No one's gonna hear us, and no one's gonna hear me. Appreciate um, it. Shout out, bro. Shout out, Bryce. Shout out, Viper. Shout out, Sticks. Shout out, everyone. Literally, um, all love. Shout out Twin the Selector, bro. Thank you, bro. Shout Follow out. me on IG at Twin the Selector, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Put me in your phone. <laughs> That's how I know you're a natural because I didn't have to ask you to say it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I want people to follow me, bro. I, yo, send me funny shit. Like, literally, send me something funny. I got send me funny videos. I laugh at them. I watch things all day. I need a laugh. I need everything. I need support. So send me whatever you got. Music, too. All artists. Y'all know the drill. Follow the man. Thank you once again, Bryce. Thank you. Thank too. you. Thank you, too. Shout out, Bryce, for hooking this shit up. But y'all know the fucking drill. I don't got to run through this shit no more. Mm -hmm. Follow the man. Check him out on all of his social medias. Funny ass dude. We didn't get to get too much into his comedy this episode. But if y'all look at his Instagram, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Trust me, I got more coming. (laughs) I'll be back. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Check out the man. Make sure if you ain't subscribed already, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. Click that subscribe button. Like this video if you haven't already. I'm tired of this infomercial shit. I've been saying it the past couple episodes. I really need to pre-record some shit for this part because I hate doing it. Everything else genuine as fuck, and then I got to do this fucking commercial ass bullshit. Yeah. But y'all know the drill. This has been episode 86. Tomorrow, I'm doing Rob um, Puts in Work episode, so he's the next episode. Episode before, Glasses Malone, LA legend. So check that episode out if you haven't already. Y'all motherfuckers know the vibe. We'll see you motherfuckers next week. Purple World, we out this bitch. See ya.